Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team podcast, connecting Kill Team communities across the globe. If you're passionate about the tactical skirmish game that brings together strategy, lore, and creativity, you are in the right place. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and stay updated with our latest episodes. If you want to support the show, check out our Patreon. Your support means a lot to us. Follow us by using the social media links in the podcast description for all the latest news, and be sure to leave a review to let us know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. Here's today's episode. All right. I found the record button, <laughs> and now we're walking around in New York, in New York, I, yo, I'm, I'm heading this way, Adrian, for a second. Adrian yeah. is I'm, headed that way. I am leaving, because I live here, and these suckers have to go back to Williamsburg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi, though. I'll walk for an bl- extra block. I'll go out of my He'll way. He'll walk for an I'll extra go out block. out of my way. Right. We better make use of this extra yes. block. Yes. What do you want to know? Uh, how was being a TO? It was great. It was actually a lot of fun. It was really rewarding. It was cool to like connect with the community here in New York, like not when I was competing. So I didn't have the blinders on. I could actually like understand and appreciate the whole scope of it. You know, help people out with calls and like be there to support people. It was fucking great. I really enjoyed it. It was a good time. I still want to compete. <laughs> but like from time to time, it's cool to be a TO. <laughs> as long as you have the golden ticket already, as Adrian. As, yeah, as long as I already have my ticket, then I can be a TO. <laughs> okay, so also... Um, what are, what's your team that you're playing competitively right now? Oof, right now, I don't have one. Uh, I haven't had time this year to figure it out, but right now I'm eyeballing Hyrotech, uh, with maybe a Nemesis call as a backup, because I think they're cool and I like their models, uh, although I don't think they're the best elite team, and who else, Travis? I don't really know. The Warp Coven is... Oh, I don't want to, I know, but I don't want to, I don't want to... But that's wanna... because you have a problem with, you need all of your stuff to look insane. Yeah. And I, that's I, not I because a... of Warp Coven being powerful. Warp Coven is powerful enough. Warp, Warp Coven is powerful. I don't feel any attachment to them when I play them. Uh, I don't have the fucking time or the desire to learn Inquisition or paint that many models. Or Warp Coven, for that matter, I so I won't say, be playing them. <laughs> I was like, Warp Coven is not a simple one. No, it's not. There's too many models, and I have, like, Night Lord's proxies for everything, and I can't get them done in time. And I don't want to sweat that hard, so... <laughs> I'm actually taking it down a notch for Worlds this year. I'm going to try and take, like, maybe uh, what people think is probably, like, a mid-level team. Upper see, mid. Uh, well, upper uh, mid, see how well I can this, do. Like Corsairs? No, no, no. I hate, oh, me and elves, That's like, we wouldn't have time for that in a block walk. We, in this uh, economy? Me, yeah, in this economy. <laughs> me and elves competitively do not get along. So elves are fun. I love them, but I can't play them at a competitive setting. So I you mean, are probably going to do higher tech for worlds? Yeah, maybe. When's this going to come out? <laughs> <laughs> no, in like, no, in like 20 minutes? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I have, honestly, I don't know, but I, I kind of like them right now. They're cool. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool in a clever way. Yeah. And it's like a fun kind of clever that's tanky, which works for a former Commandos player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, or I'll take Commandos again. I'll do it. Don't <laughs> don't make me do it. I'll do it. Just bring a million boys. <laughs> I'll do it. All boys. A Chop million. them up. Yeah. So many stun grenades. I'll bring a whole orc wall. Like, I'll bring a 40k army of just boys. <laughs> Wog. And when each Wog. one of them dies at the world championships, you take them and throw them in yeah, the garbage, like have a never to be more. seen again. I'll have enough for all however many games, yeah. All right, this is where my block we part good ways. Good luck out there. Yeah, good luck down there on the I subway. I just bumped you. <laughs> Remember, right, that was Adrian. You see you, Adrian. Yeah. All right. Jason, the star of the show, as it were, for Just Another Kill Team podcast. We're going to have to call this Just Another Jason podcast at this oh, rate. Geez. I would have to have multiple podcasts for that to be true. <laughs> I How guess does it feel to be going to the world championships, Jason? <sighs> well... I was not expecting that. I mean, I was like, photos are cool, and I'll, like, I'll say a bunch of crazy stuff about it. But I was like, I don't know, man. I haven't, I haven't like, gone to, like, these, like, top four cut. Like, my first loss was the top table. Well, let's, let's be real. You know, this tournament, we had 46 players, and nine of them were world championships attenders. This That's year. true, yeah. I mean, the one loss that I did have put me down to sixth because I had a tie <laughs> with this amazing uh, amazing game with Matt, who is a listener and a, a Patreon subscriber. So and thanks a world to championship that. Attender. And a world champion attender with some uh, like amazing sportsmanship, amazing paint. Um, the, the paint on Matt's Necrons, amazing lava scheme Necrons. Phenomenal. And I, I would be remiss if we didn't call out that we have one other... One other player in this podcast tonight. Blaine, hello. Welcome. Uh, hello. (laughs) 
on Hunter Clade, the master uh, of Hunter Clade. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a fun fun time at the event. Uh, first New York Open that any of the Six Sided Legion could get out to. Uh, Hopefully not the last. Ho- definitely not the last. But uh, Hunter Clade, you know, they're they're great. They're just maybe not great enough. You want to take your dice and crush them into little bits? Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe the models too. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, this was your first time in New York, my first time in New York. How, yeah. How's it been? Uh, I mean, I haven't really got to sightsee yet, but yeah, it's busy. A lot busier than I'm probably comfortable with. But, you know, a lot of ambulances and police vehicles everywhere and, you know, in New like, York. Yeah. In like 72 hours that I've been here, I've heard as many horn honks as I have in like the last five years in Minnesota. Yeah, it's like that's to be expected, you know, like it's New York. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, just like going to and from the event has been quite an adventure. We're riding the subway, we're walking the streets, there's stuff happening all the time. Uh, I'm like, this is very New York. Yeah, I mean, is... I've, been, I've been to some big cities, but I'm like, okay, I get it, New <laughs> yeah, York. Yeah, this is, I mean, we're... I mean, you know, this is being recorded while we're walking down yeah. <laughs> New York. We just we just walk around the streets. You know, it's great. We love it. I don't here. think that car is going to stop. Maybe he should. He should. Uh, okay, let's just. He wouldn't not. We're just gonna. <laughs> yep, we're gonna do that <laughs> classic <going>. New York <laughs> jaywalk. For Thanks for that car. For yep. Just for you guys, so that you really get that raw flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's part of the fun of the New York Open. You know. New York is fucking sick, and everyone that comes has to deal with New York, for better or for worse. Just uh, just so everyone's clear, we are now heading down into the subway, where it is kind of echoey and Yeah, quiet, you might hear the reverberations. Um, How's the food been? How are the vibes in New York, guys? Vibes? Oh, food's, food's been great. Vibes, vibes big. Food's good. There's just, there's fish on every breakfast sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that in the Midwest. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's definitely not normal. The salmon, the salmon don't make it? I guess not. I they can't it. swim that far. We have cod. I mean, you know, fish fry Fridays, I guess. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if, but, I don't like, know. have you ever just gone into a bagel store and put fish on your bagel uh, in the morning? I, I, we don't have bagel stores in, in Wassa, so <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> We don't have fish in Minnesota. That's that's not true. That's a lie. It's fully a lie. Just not not like this. Yeah. I suppose to bring it back to the kill team of it all. Anyways. The real story. Phobos, baby. You guys, I want a golden ticket with the Phobos. What? And he fucking just shot people from across the map the entire time, and everyone said it w- it wouldn't work. I I had to go find the moment in the stream and take a screenshot, which is just a la- a laser across the whole thing. Um. And I was like, this represents everything I've been trying to say for years. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Shane moved a model, and he's like, yeah, this is, this is good, good cover. And I was like, is it, though? <laughs> and uh, I went back and, and kind of like took a glance at the, the overhead, and I was like, that was very clean. That was easy. That was obvious. It, to be fair, when I looked at it, it did look reasonably obvious, but I understand why we pulled a laser out for it. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's that incursor brain. You absolutely nuke that model. Uh, no. So that was actually just to drain one command point because uh, he dangled the model and then uh, moved it up, uh, not close up to heavy cover, shoot it. He does the blinding aura. And then I didn't even use any rerolls. I didn't use deadly shots. I was just like, if I shoot, I'm going to flip back to conceal. It's guerrilla tactics. And, and that's why... It would have been nuked if novitiates weren't such big. Yeah, novitiates. That's vote, true. Vote them off the island. That's true. Yeah, Just so the Kill Team podcast did have a late night brainwashing session, <laughs> so that we could convince Blaine that <laughs> novitiates are in fact kind of kind of gross. No, bro, that is so it's gross. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take rocket science to know that the this math and these dice. It's like if you've never played the game and you run into this, you're just like, oh, it's ruined. I think that was one of the more interesting stories of the New York Open in general is everyone came in, you know, almost half of the meta was Space Marines. Everyone thought Space Marines were going to do very well. They did, but not in perhaps the ways that people were expecting. Well, it was also three weeks <coughs> after the release of the, like, the rules for the edition. Too. It was like, so it was like 
the meta isn't really formed yet or wasn't. We have tier lists. We have people with very sure, strong opinions sure, on tier lists, sure. but at the end of the day, the tier list is you gotta you gotta play the game. And novitiates just kind of insane in damage mitigation. And we've got a, a late night attendee. What? <laughs> we got we got one Are of those there, and they heard space birds. <laughs> Oh, we have one of the uh, one of the space one of the legionary players from the tournament. How'd you do? Welcome. Oh, Nico. it was good. Like I had a really fun time. My results were as good as it was intended, but it was well, almost there. Oh, that's, that's one game hear. for one, one game from two losses. So. That's what, that's what happens when you open up round one against Hunter Clay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are what are the tough matchups for the legionary? Uh, Inquisition. Inquisition. That's yeah, a tough one. Yeah. You yep. know how to do. They had too many. Cause, yeah, because they just turn off your threats. piercing and then eat you. No, too many threats for me. Uh, that makes sense. I, sh I should have gotten full Norgo, but I didn't want to play that guy. You wanted to, you wanted to have fun and, yeah, and do it. stuff and not just tank. That's it. <laughs> uh, besides the Inquisition, what else was tough? Okay, I have a. That guy was a nice matchup. Yep, was that, that's Blaine game? on his Hunter, hunter Clade. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that was a Shrek Town kill. Really nice kill. All I, know, all I know is as a TO, I walk by the table back and forth a couple times. I was like, oh, I think Blaine's probably dead. And then we co I come back after a little bit more. I'm like, Blaine won by one point. I was like, oh, really pulled that one out of nowhere. <laughs> so, like, what was the end state of that game? Uh, end state was uh, his uh, leader on three wounds hiding in a building. His Shrive Talon, or his, what was it, uh, Icon? Your Icon Bearer? Went, on my point, on your point for two points, so yeah, uh, yep, to try to get my my point on my uh, on my side of the board. So which win track was it? Uh, kill tac ops or crit ops that kill squeaked it out? Uh, so it definitely wasn't kill op. Um, it was me denying you contain at the end of the game yeah, with my the, leader and, and the extra point of kill ops. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah, it was, so, a, it was a one point game, right? Yeah, yeah so, so it was. It, it, well, actually, this is a fun point for all, you know the three guys who played in the tournament. How did you guys feel about primary op as like the last reveal, like all the drama at the last second? I thought it was very exciting. There was uh, all these times when nice I was like, I don't know drama, who won, but uh, you know you <laughs> fucked it up when you chose wrong. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> because I, my last game was. Like, I think in every single one of my matchups, by the <laughs> end of turn two, I could anticipate what my opponent had chosen. Because it's like they reveal contain or they reveal like some other super easy tack up for their mm -hmm. faction. So it's like, oh, they definitely chose tack up. Or they're like super hard pushing for points and it's it's kind of telegraphed that they chose crit up. So it's like I don't I never had any opponent choose choose kill up against me. But Oh, that's interesting. I never chose I thought I was gonna do only kill up and I didn't choose it a single time. What about you? I never chose kill up. Uh, <laughs> I got chosen against once and he killed one? Oh, jeez. Rest in peace, two, that two guy. Two at the end. As, as a note to listeners, just for anyone who thinks that kill op is an easy plan, you got to kill the whole freaking team to get anything out of it. So just don't yeah, it's don't plan. No, it's yeah. hard. Yeah, well, yeah then, we're back to points team. It's not just kill team anymore. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's too inconsistent. Your, your opponent can and here comes a great. fucking subway. This is the big part of New York. <laughs> Funny for the memes. Is I went plant or plant beacons for four of my games, and my last two I went for uh, champion. And neither of those games I scored, or I scored like one, two points on it total so between the two games. You should have planted beacons. I should have planted beacons every game. I, I guess it's such a beacons with you, Jeremy. <laughs> such a strong. I will come over here and put this put this box in front of you, and I'll score. And they're like, stop, <laughs> please. <laughs> Well, it would make me go a little farther up than the board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, how, how are we feeling about kind of like generic tack up balance after this tournament? Because this is, you know, I think tack up balance is maybe one of the bigger contention points right now. How are you guys feeling? Because you, Nico, you had access to security, seek and destroy. Yes. Blaine, you have access to recon, seek and destroy. And then Jason, you have recon infiltrate. So a little bit of everything between the three of you. How do you guys actually feel about the balance? Uh, I think uh, second destroy is really hard because champion, you need to kill somebody or two, and that's 
pretty much impossible to make sure you're gonna kill two. It is insanely hard. Yeah, and it's. I think most of the games you get champion, you're gonna get three points max. Maybe so. Maybe, maybe, I and one roll, uh, half a uh, bad roll that takes points out. I, I think champion is like a consideration into like elites if you're really good at killing elites because if like you can go into turn two and you like know that you can like GA two something and get like a spicy like kill on something, right? It's just an, it's just two points. Or if like you have a marine weak in the second turn and you go into third turn and you can like just roll up with like a melee dude and yeah, one tap it. Well, yeah, yeah. I My know. problem with champion is that you're gonna lose initiative once and then you nominate your champion in the strategy phase and then someone just like they only have one target and they run away. And like it's it's easy to kind of like accidentally mess that up, or if you're playing against something that isn't elites, then it's just like you just kill one and then you like leave a guardsman on one and then you're like, well, I guess I only get one point this turn. And like that's how many that's good tough. plays are gonna leave you two kills easy? Or even like you lose the initiative once, like that's, that's, you know, last edition eliminate guards. Every time I played against someone, where I ran them away, they're like, oh, I've never seen that before. I was like. I'm not going to give you this point. Yeah. And champion is but, way worse because it's, it's a full, like, you need that one point. So if you leave, <laughs> you just lose two points, the game ends. Yeah. Yeah. It's, easy, yeah. it's easy to deny. Yeah, yeah I think really a huge... Easy. And you have to call it before you do it. Yeah, that makes it <clears> tough. I, think, I do think a huge amount of why I was able to do as well as I was was just choosing plant beacons. And then I just, like, stuck. I was like, I'm going to look at plant beacons and... Um, and pick up item or whatever whatever that one's called recover, recover, recover item um, and then I was like those are the only two I'm going to choose from out of the six that way I only need to be familiar with two I'm not going to like fumble any tac ops and that worked really well and then I like had a plan you like know what the plan is and yeah I got in, like make it your you primary did, practice it a bunch I mean, you did very well on primary op scoring yeah uh, I think I think Plant Beacons is probably way, way, way stronger on Into the Dark. Uh, the one Into the Dark matchup I played uh, was against Kroot. Uh, Kroot took it, and he got five points on it. Uh, I also took it. We revealed it, like, back-to-back -back activations. Uh, and I ended up scoring five on it as well, because you can, like, plant them right next to each other on opposite sides <laughs> of the wall. Yep. And, like, it's it's fine. And it, it, it's... You can just plant them a little closer to each other. I had I had this little worrying moment in my Phobos mirror that my opponent, Jordan, nice guy, amazing, uh, he planted a beacon, and then I was like, oh, shoot, can I plant next... Can I not plant next That's to his beacons? I and I was worried game. about that for a second? Yes. Yeah, and, and then I was like, oh, I can. Beacon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then I just started putting my beacons on his beacons. <laughs> anyway, before we were so rudely interrupted... <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, uh, just putting them like right next to your opponent's beacons is like super, like just the, right just on top they, of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally on top. Of it's kind of just a system jammer. They they plant beacons and you're like, ah, oh, no, 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 and then you just you system jam it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So I don't know. It's... Oh, so outside of attack ops, you know, obviously recon for recover, like recon, still for whatever reason, still very good. Security also pretty good. I think right now in from, early days. From what I've heard, contain is like what it's just so good. The surveillance. Honestly, I think right now everyone is in the headspace of I'm going to kill a bunch of people. But I think there are teams that can abuse infiltration really hard. Like commandos, no one was playing them. If you send a grot. <laughs> to your opponent's side, he has <laughs> and he just he just sits there and just scores nine points. So does it have? To, does the valid target have to be based on that model's shooting? Nope. Because the grot targeting, valid is just valid targets. So you can have melee people gun. creep around and score yeah. surveillance. Yes. yes. So, okay. Cool. And that's where he just sits in your building. And you're like, you want to go to that stronghold with nothing to do, or do you want to stop nine points? <laughs> I'll send like one dude and he zip lines the other side. Of the <laughs> yeah, you can't track that dude down. Yeah, I think that's a good point about blooded and infiltration with the uh, surveillance thing. But the the trouble is, you need to be in the opponent's territory. So you like you shunt someone into a turbo dangerous situation and then just eyeball them and then well, and that model probably dies. Yeah, I think that's okay after that. for a team that like blooded where they get benefits if their guys die. So it's like they're kind of getting and benefits either way. Yeah, right? you've got mega goons who just throw out there for hidden benefits. It's the only one though. 
this and train Navy is thing? our train. Huh? Surveillance? The Navy thinks surveillance? Like Navy breachers? I think oh. they're security so you can destroy them. They're security. Yeah, they're security. Yeah. The next stop is Bergen Street. I don't think you can do mission actions. Well, I guess I can just go like right here. Oh, you want to sit on the inside? I think I'm probably fine. Alright. Let's we pause this. Hey, it's part of the fun. Right? We are on the subway now. This is like midnight, late night kill team. Yeah, exactly. After after a whole two two days of hardcore play kill team. After hours kill team, yeah. Just another kill team podcast. After hours. Except right here on Monday morning for everyone's feet. <laughs> I just have to do uh, a proposition here is to midnight tournament. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know Spain does them. Like, not midnight, but we start at 10 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can start at 8. We know yeah. in Spain we know. But end and go grab a drink and go home. <laughs> and That'd be kind of vibes. To next tournament next? <laughs> I just remember the at the first world championships in New Mexico, Ace and Carlos are talking about, like, oh yeah, we started at like 10 o'clock, go to 4 a.m. The rest of the Americans like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, I know people who finish that tournament and go to the, the Sunday one. <laughs> Is that like six yeah, games in one day? At all of the morning hours and none of the sleeping hours. Wait, they start at 10 a.m. and go till... No, 10 p.m. Oh, they start at 10 p.m. and go till 4 a.m. for one tournament? Yeah, and have to go to the morning one. Oh, and then they go to a second tournament afterwards. The morning one at 9 or something and no sleep. That's... That's hardcore. I think the way it was described is this is how we train for the bigger tournaments. <laughs> you can win the second one? Your pro. Yeah, you can win one back to back. You don't, you're quiet. Yeah, you play autopilot, and if your autopilot is good enough to win a tournament, you know you're, you're good to go. <laughs> and you can just physically stay alive through all that and still win a game. I don't know. I never did it, so I have to try. Can we try here? Maybe actually. Worth mentioning that we weren't actually that drowning in elites. Uh, as much as I was, as I, I mean, for the, for top, the top eight. The top eight did not drown in elite. I'm oh, surprised. So, I only so played I, one elite. So I did the I math, I did the math on it. Um, when there were 46 players, it was 43% of players going to New York Open had elite teams. And that wasn't including higher tech circle. It was just Warp Coven, Nemesis Claw, Angels, and Legionaries, and Phobos. So the actual Marine teams. Plus, Warp Coven can flex and be, like, not an elite team. Yeah. So, did they play not elite? Yeah, I mean, the game that I lost at the top table, my only loss, was George, and he brought uh, four goats. So, what does that make for? Eight three, models? Seven, or three, four. Four, four, four. Yeah, four, four. So, that was eight models, which is, like, key light. Yeah, you have windows. windows in the subway. Huh? Why are there windows in the subway? There used to not be AC on the subway. Whoa, but... Like so you, need the, you want the windows back then. Imagine the Look, heat and the full... full you, well, back, back in the day, you want the air flow, even if it's stinky, it's better than no air. <laughs> it was like underground, like... Look. New York makes sense, as long as you've been in New York just long enough to understand New it York. It makes sense if you need, like, if you kind of need, make it make sense, you know? <laughs> okay, guys, I'm here, so, so guys, all right. Uh, what can you say you do with? Oh, um, well, uh, you're good. Talk to you, but sort of? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See you, brother. See you. So you know, top eight. Where are we at? How do you, what, how do we feel about the New York Open top eight? Let's take a look. The incredibly scuffed pairings for top eight because primary op as a primary target breaker, not supported at all in BCP at the time of this recording. So did it just like skip that primary op section 
No, it's recorded. It just isn't used as a tiebreaker. I had to manually walk through six rounds by eight players worth of pairings to figure out how many how many points you guys missed. So, like, well, is BCP still not reflecting the final standings? The final standings are not going to get reflected as it stands. So yeah, like, um, so BCP is a little bit different than how the actual scoring worked. So I wanted primary op to be the secondary tiebreaker after wins because I think it's an interesting way to figure out who played the best. I think there are arguments for win path, opponent strength of score, or whatever, but I decided like months ago, primary op sounds cool, let's do primary op. Yeah, and there are, I mean, like a lot of the other stuff does have a lot of problems, and I've like heard and been involved in a, in a bunch of those conversations, and I agree, like primary op is something you have control over, where if, like strength of schedule, if one of your opponents drops, then it'll just like tank your strength of schedule, and there's nothing you can do about it, and it has, doesn't reflect player skill. How about you, Blaine? Do you care about primary op versus some uh, other secondary tiebreaker? So I know Dylan at the tournament made a, a pretty good like comment about how primary op is only three points, so it can make some awkward like ties on that for tiebreakers, but I think personally it's it's controllable. It's like the one thing that you have control over throughout the entire game, and it's like the like the center of this edition, right? Like you're, it was to hone in on one part of the game and like what you wanted to play more. And I think that's kind of, that is what's reflected in like it being a tiebreaker. Yeah, I mean, it is a really good form of skill expression. Travis, did we, were there a bunch of ties in like uh, the... So in the top three, we had two players at 16, 16 points. And that was... Shane and Shane and uh, Dil or Shane and Mike both had a tie on primary op scoring, and then it came down to the opponent's strength of score. So, because Dylan got 17 points because he dropped one point for the whole tournament, which is honestly like a really big deal. I think he. I'm pretty sure he took recover items every time. I yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I. I know he was on recon the whole time. I'm almost positive. Um, but I don't know what other archetype Hearth can have right now. So, is it still security? Recon and security. So maybe he took contain threat, or contain. Because I know he was talking about security a little bit, so... I'm not surprised, as Hearth can. It's not hard to keep your opponent off your side when you're small and scary. <laughs> I think I might have gotten 17 out of 18 on my primary ops. Yeah, you did very well. Unfortunately for you, with a draw, you were necessarily under all of the people with wins. Yeah. So that's where it came down to. Because it was really close at the end. There were two other games that could have stripped it away from you. Yeah. But even if they had matched your record, they had to have beaten your record. And with 17 primary op points, it was pretty hard to actually steal away from you at the last minute. This is speed bound at local train. The next stop is the Lancaster. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. So do you feel stronger about your opinions about Phobos being bonkers? Phobos are as, exactly as bonkers as I thought. Um, I mean, they're... Yeah, they're, they are very, very, very strong. The Warp Coven is just insanely tough. Uh, I'm definitely gonna rewatch that game and be like, "What went wrong?" Uh, like, I, I just like I felt a little foggy because I was just like so. I, I mean, I was like pretty stressed out. I've never done that well, and you know, there's there's a lot going on. It was a it was a hectic, it was a hectic thing. Um, I felt I I'm still feeling it right now. A little just like brain fog, kind of just like you murdered your brain on six games of Kill Team, and. Um, there's a couple times I was like, man, I should not have used my free mission action on some nonsense. And if I, like, used it better, I probably could have squeaked out a couple more points. But I think I still, like, probably got mulched. But, like, maybe there were some hot dice rolls that were pretty impactful. Um, but even in that case, there's, like, choices that you can make that are better. But I, honestly, like, the, the biggest... And I'll tell you all now, because I don't know if I'm going to play Phobos, and I don't, I don't know who's going to listen, and I don't know if who's listening, and if it even matters, but the biggest weakness to Phobos is just to threat-saturate them, 
So if you just flood the board and try to absolutely crush them with every threat you have on turn two, that is the scariest thing, because if you drip feed threats, I just omni scramble and destroy them and trade nothing for it. Whereas if you just threat saturate and hit me with like six assault intercessors at once, I just die. Because let's be real, they got 12 wounds. This is not a great breakpoint in this edition. Power swords, four or five weapons. It's not great. Yeah, everything just kills Phobos Marines, but that doesn't matter if you just pop smoke and like have perfect angles. Because if you are obscured and ignore piercing against every single incoming shot, you just don't care about anyone's shooting. You don't care if they hit on threes. You don't care if they're piercing two. You and then you just like shoot back with your your naked bolters uh, that saturate actually pretty good and then you just hammer people with a bunch of like low stakes shots pretty good the real question after two days of brainwashing blade are you a believer in the ridiculous threats no <laughs> not at all I still can't wrap my head around <laughs> If you guys want a preview of what I'm maybe going to rant about next, it might just be all Banshees. But I might just try a couple games and realize it's as horrible as everyone thinks and leave. But I'm kind of just like, you guys, Banshees. Okay, last edition, all Banshees. Slap the shit out of things. This edition, Banshees. Maybe. Okay, so the things, the, the big thing that they lost, there's two. One of them, Here when you, you when you fall back as your aspect technique, it doesn't have fly anymore. It's like you strike with a crit and then you fly away. That's gone. That's pretty huge, because that was like all the cool plays were around that. Uh, the other thing they lost is your Exarch doesn't hit on twos anymore. But now, you can teleport your Exarch all over the whole map. Uh, your fly is seven inches, and all of your instances of balance have upgraded to ceaseless. Pretty good. Very CP hungry, but it looks interesting. I don't disagree that it sounds interesting, but so fragile. It is incredibly fragile. The just a scratch should probably be every turning point, and then they're fine. I mean, make them point nine dancers ones. have been doing okay this edition, so there might actually be some room for Blades of Cain. Yeah. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. So, Blaine, what do you what do you want to play after the New York Open experience? Um, so I'm gonna take uh, Hunter Clade, put him on the shelf for a little bit. Uh, maybe try him in some casual stuff. I don't know yet. Uh, you know, I got to try some new things. Um, uh, Joey actually has kind of convinced me to look at uh, Aqualons a little bit deeper, and I don't know. They they always looked a little interesting with being able to like have these piercing two weapons and being able to like drop in as, as threats and like make your opponent play a little bit more cagey, so that way you can kind of get in a comfortable position. Um, and so I kind of want to try that out and. You know, test it a little bit. If it's not my playstyle, uh, I'll find something else. I know Exaction Squad got some buffs that I I want to try. They can shoot grenades into engagement range now at unlimited range. Uh, they can double fight like really well now because they don't have uh, hit modifiers to the shields anymore, and they can like do the brutal backup thing like really easily. So I don't know. I want to try it and, and see how it goes. I've got a lot of testing to do since it's a new edition. So. But yeah, not Banshees. <laughs> Look, I think the addition is in a pretty amusing spot right now. If you can figure out a tool that can manage six elites and run away from them or score away from them, there's still plenty of game to be had while Space Marines are able to two-shot you. Just don't get two-shot. Yeah, I mean, you need a team that can beat elites and probably beat Inquisition or uh, Novitiates, and you're probably fine. Probably. <laughs> That's probably true. And for listeners who don't know how good Nifty Shits are, good luck. <laughs> yeah, just sit down, look at their rules, roll some dice, join us in our frustration. <laughs> is it is is this this edition's uh, vet guard for us already? It is. Yeah. Yep. 
Even once they're nerfed into the ground, I'll say nerf them more. Oh, they're turning into the Pathfinders of last edition now. <laughs> Take away an operative. <laughs> Take away nine operatives. Well, I think with that... This will be a late night edit, Jason. Good luck. <laughs> oh, no, no. This is pure, pure rock cut here. No edits. I kind of thought about that. But I don't know. Maybe I'll comb through it and make a couple of clips. Um, as always, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Blaine, for joining us. Hey, no problem. It's always a pleasure. Glad I could be here and, you know, watch you uh, finally get your golden ticket with Phobos. Heck yeah. And thank you, listeners, for listening until the end.